today I'm fishing with Mackie from Weymouth Angling Centre and he's brought me down to his, well, one of his favourite, one of his many favourites, day ticket water, just a regular day ticket water. It's got three lakes. I'm in the county of Dorset. The sun is shining. Do you know what? Can we fail to catch? I do wish I hadn't said that. Hi Graham. Well, yeah, today I brought you to a nice little lake by me. Um, it's a general sort of course fishing lake. Um, it's got some really nice fishing actually. It's quite a hidden gem. Um, we've got some really nice tench up to about £9 in this lake. Um, I've had some big roach out of here. Um, there's plenty of little carp, loads of different fish to keep you going and you can catch them on many different methods. At the moment I'm just basically using a method feeder with a small sort of four inch rig. Um, just red maggots and a bit of ground bait really. Um, I've had my rod in what, three or four minutes and I'm already getting knocks on it. Um, I really like changing my fishing up. Um, I'm using a really light drop shot rod today with a small feeder um, just to get a bit of sport out of the fish today. Um, so yeah, I've got maggots, I've got an array of ground bait. Um, I'll just show you here what I've got. So I've got my maggots in here and this is my ground bait with some maggots in. Um, it's called Special G. It's a really nice green, it's fish meal with um, hemp in it and it's really nice, it binds together really well and then as soon as it hits the water, it crumbles up and it does have a really nice fizz into the water as well so um, let's hope we can catch a few fish today. And you use that with the conjunction with your feeder and, yeah, and you so, loose feed it as well? Yeah, so basically what I'll do is that will be squeezed around my feeder like that and then I will throw a few balls in, some pellets over the top um, and just yeah, just keep, keep the swim baited up, try and keep the fish in there and hopefully with a small fish being sort of attracted in it will bring the tench in and hopefully we'll um we'll see, see one a few nice hopefully. fish today yeah so carp in here as well Mackie. yeah there's a few small carp in here i mean um there's probably carp up to say what 10 pound in this one um is there's a specimen carp lake just up the other end which is sort of they grow a bit bigger um, and then you've got a match sort of carp lake where there's loads of carp in there up to say eight pound um so yeah it's a it's a nice little fishery to come to out in the heart of dorset and um, the sun's shining so i reckon it's gonna be a really good day we just had a good pull round while we were filming then didn't you mackie yeah i don't think i've got it has he come off it's yeah. definitely a good rod, rod bite yeah he's come off he took the maggots <laughs> so just show us what you do there with that so guys know what the method feeder is there Mackie. So this is a little method feeder, um, so what I have on here is this is my little hair rig that I put my maggots on and all I do is, I'll scoop a bit of that out, it's been wet so I get my ground bait. That's a small size method feeder. Yeah so it's really know, small it? so then what I do is I just get my ground bait just slightly squeeze it over like that. I'm not too fussed about if it don't look nice. <laughs> it's all on there. It's all gonna get eaten. Yeah, it's all gonna go in the water anyway. So I'll just make sure I get a nice bit on there. Trim a little bit off. And that's ready to cast out now. So what I'll do, any bits that I fell, fell off of it, I will just gather up and and just chuck that into my little margin spot I'm fishing and then what I'll do is I'll get my maggots there's a few casters in there as well which is always nice um, I have I put them on the hair but I think what I might do this time is I might just nick a load on the hook you think that one missed just missed the maggot yeah. with it? so what I might do this time is just put a few maggots on the hook and leave the hair this time. So leaving that tag into the hair won't, yeah. won't bother the fish, but it also I gives you the option yeah. to change if you do want to go back to fishing the hair. Yeah, so I'm just going to put a load of maggots on. The hair will get sort of, you won't, ain't really going to see it that much on there anyway. Could you fish like a, a mini boilie on that hair or is yeah, it too yeah, small? Yeah, no, you could fish a mini boilie if you have one. Um, Tench do like a little boily, so I've just got a nice little bunch of maggots there. A lot of people actually squeeze their hook bait onto the method feeder as well, 
but I like to keep it out of the method feeder because then um, a lot of the small fish will be occupied sort of hitting that method feeder and my bait's just going to be out there away from all the little fish and hopefully a bigger tench will rock up and want to... And you're fishing just in the margins, yeah? Yeah, so I'm literally... Just there. And tench still come in there, you're still... Yeah, yeah, a lot of the tench will come in close to feed here. Um, it's always been a... This is where I caught from last time, just right in the margins. And all I'm going to do is loosen my drag up slightly. Oh, there we go, bite straight away. I don't worry too much about... Oh, I see the bite then. Let's go see if we can zoom in on that rod top for the guys. I don't worry too much about having a little rod stand or anything. I just like to lay it on the grass, bare minimal. Bring as least tackle as I can and catch as many fish as I can. Been uh, non stop at the moment, guys, for just on the float down here. I've now got just about a swinger, probably ping off. Oh, should be swinging these. A nice little bream there. I'll just show this one to you. If you keep still. So good action on the float there, close in, seems like it's, I've plumbed it up about, I've got to say, five feet, something like that, in close, so it's look, small fish, but a good fish, nice fish to catch on a float rod. Well Mackie's choice of venue is very good here, I could barely keep two rods on a go, I'd rather keep the feeder rod going, and I'm actually going to bigger baits, I think I'm going to go to bigger hooks, but look, Lovely roach like that. Who can grumble? That's good fishing. Especially on a float, but I've had to put the brolly up here because it's windy and you're just going to get wind in the mic there. So we'll leave it up and then hopefully if we do get a bigger fish, I can come out and get the smaller camera with it. At the moment it seems to be non-stop action, maggots, sweet corn, whatever. When you put in the water it's, uh, it's getting chewed on. There you go people, I did say it was, it was one after the other, that was literally the second put in there, another little roach, floats back out already, it's still going, it's going, it's going to go, it's going to go, that's a single grain of sweet corn which I thought would you know get rid of the tiny fish, I've had a um, little rud as well, I missed that one. It's quite deep. I'd say it's all it's all the five feet just under the margins here. Do you only really get lilies when you see lilies? I think about sort of you'd reckon on say four foot being the maximum depth. They don't really grow up from deep water. So if you see lilies you can think <clears throat> fishing alongside though you're gonna be I guess anything from three feet to say four and a half feet. But it does seem as though here it just drops all, it drops away quite a, quite a bit of a shelf there. Go in again. I'm using actually, so some of you people know, <clears throat> one of my hands look like I've been sweeping the chimney again. Got a nice oh, oh, hang on, Mackie's got a fish. Oh, I'll, 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 it's a double whammy, Mac. Hang on a second. I don't know. I'm just worried this is going to be one of those big roaches you said about. Oh, 
Oh, I don't know what this one is. It's like some. Can you guys see that? Yeah, <clears throat> this looks like a hybrid. What is that? It's a sort of. I don't know what it is, people. Answers on a postcard. Carp, just a small carp. Anyway, we're going to go and check Mackie's fish out in a second. Um, I've basically used a fake bit of corn with a load of maggots on the air. So there we go. Gorgeous fish. Ooh. Is it much buoyancy to the uh, the, the corn? You know, the yeah, fake corn. Yeah, a fair bit. So what do you do if you want to sort of counterbalance it? You have to put a shot or I'll something. I've just put in. a little bit of split shot just so I can counterbalance that. And there you go. And do they go to any size here, the breed? Yeah, they get a lot bigger than this. So fours, you get four pounds? Yeah, easily. There's easily, there's easily a lot of bigger fish in here. Um, obviously, after those tench, but um, it's a welcome sight. Any sort of fish is. Absolutely. It's getting back. So what I've got here, Graham, is a piece of plastic corn on a hair with a bit of split shot just at the back, just to balance it, because... Um, where it's fake corn, it, um, it's quite buoyant, so... Would that actually um, swing up vertically over the top yeah, of the shot? Yeah, so without, you know? without the split shot, that would pop up in the water, but with that, that's just going to sort of sit like that in the water, really. It's not going to go too high, it's just going to sit there, just looking natural. So with all the maggots on the hook and that, um, yeah, it's so a nice gonna, little... So you're going to put a few, a few red maggots yeah, on put, as well? Yeah, I'll put like three or four red maggots on as well, and um, hopefully... That's what the tench like, so get one of them. A bit big to swing that one, guys, but I've given it a go. I'm going to stop jumping around. Falling on from Mackie's Roach there. That's a bream. What I've done, I'll show you in a second. Probably not making any difference is that many fish here. What I've done just because there's so many rat here and smaller fish, I think they're stopping the bait getting down to the bottom. Now, if I've got a chance for tents, that's going to be where it is. Mackie's on that feeder, so it goes straight to the bottom. My other quiver tip of feeder rod is out there in the middle. I'm getting bites, but the action is on the margin. So I've switched around to sort myself out here. I'm sorry I've got to put this umbrella up, guys, but it's very, very windy. You won't hear a thing otherwise. Get myself sorted out. So I'd normally have, say, a BB locking shot either side there of here, and then I'd have a smaller shot right down near the, you know, near the hook, maybe five inches away. But I've switched it around and I've put the BB here. In fact, it slid up with that fish about six inches from where I've got the hook bait. So I'll show you. So you might be able to see it here or not. There's the hook bait. There's the shot so it goes down quite quickly and hopefully toes this down towards the bottom because I just feel that's probably where the, the better fish are going to be. Very shortly I will be bringing this feeder on it and just literally lowering it over the edge here. And here we have a really, really nice looking roach. Nice big size. Um, it's fun catching these roach, they do scrap really hard and that was again, if you look at my bait just there, a single piece of fake corn with all those red maggots. Loads of it. So they're not finicky so, at all? They're no, making... no they're not at all. So, absolutely gorgeous fish. Look at them fins. I love the little, how they've got that tinge of like orangey red. And I'm not changing the red maggots, I'm just sliding more on as they as they come off really, so... Value for money bait there, Maggie. Yeah, exactly. Let's go and catch some more.
That's a proper roach. That is a nice one. Not bad, is it? That's not a bad old fish, that one, Mackie. Here we have a nice, nice roach again. Um, I've had them out of here up to about three pound before. Um, that's probably the biggest I've had, but um, this one um, certainly ain't a bad fish. Um, there's loads of pellets that have obviously come out of it, so it's obviously feeding on my ground bait. Um, and I caught that on basically a hal like a pellet, yeah, quite a big pellet. And I've got my fake corn, but I've just basically trimmed the corn down really, really to a like to a, like a sliver, just like a little top. Yes. And um, that's what's done the business here. So good job, good job. Lovely little fish there. That's a nice one. Getting back into the water. Slowed on the inside a little bit on the float, but I went back to putting the feeder further out and I've got a fish which I imagine is like a bream or skimmer or something, who knows. Or is that? Yeah, it's a bream. If I turn it that way, turn it down there, that's in. Julie Nessie, thank you, Matthew. Here we go, it's a nice one. So we're getting a few fish now. No sign of the elusive tench yet, but we are at least getting some action. Float or ledger. Just going down to see Mackie again. He's got a, another fish which he thought might be one of those big roach. I'll tell you what, that's a, that's, a, that's a big roach if it's a roach, Mackie. What is it? I think it's one of them green, the green roach hybrid, I think. You think it might be a hybrid? Yeah. He looks funny around the mouth, doesn't he? Yeah, around the front end. There's definitely red. roach in there somewhere. Yeah, he's got the red, obviously with the red. Um, I don't know, I'd be thing, called, I, think, I think I'd be calling that a roach. What do you guys think? Is that a hybrid in there? It looks like a roach all the way. I'm thinking it is a roach, Mackie. It's a nice yeah. big one. Maybe something in the mouth doesn't look quite right. Like yeah. hybridised, I don't know. Nice fish though. Bloody nice fish though, exactly that, exactly that. Let's get him back. Oh, one of those on my float rod. Yeah. So you can see where I'm fishing. I've got a quiver tip here, which I did have out in the middle. And, and what's getting bites, so I bring it in here, and not a lot. It's died a little bit over here. I'm by these edge of this lily pad, you can just see there the float it's just, so I will check it again I would hate to think I've lost the depth, ah oh, I've got weed on it there and the bulk of the bite seemed to be just on the outside edge I'll show you about there <clears throat> and just outside the edge of the lily is where I did plummet a little bit deeper all you've got to do is follow up with just a pinch of corn like this. Out she goes. Whoop. That was a bite on the feeder. And you see I've just got double corn trying to get rid of the small fish now. It's a good, it's five, five or six feet there. I'm just letting that just sit there. 
he says. And this is the black ground bait that was given to me by the silvers expert that we had a talk about. And it does seem pretty good, I have to say. I put corn and red maggot in there. There was a bite and I missed it. Yeah, I missed that one. I'm gonna go a little tad further out. But I'll show you. So what I normally do would have a BB up either side here of the Wagler float. <clears throat> there. I'd normally have a BB up here, a small shot, on one of these small shots down by the bait. And what I've done this time to try and get that bait punch through the smaller fish is move the two small shot up there, then down here by my hook length, which is a good five, six feet away. I've got the BB shot and then my hook. I mean, I can put maggots on and I'm sure I'm fairly sure we're going to get a fish. I don't really think, to be honest, the ferocity at which they take here, that you actually need worry. One, two, three, four maggots, how you hook them, whatever. I don't really think it, it matters. So I just literally cast it there, sink the line about there. Just watch the float, guys. I'll give a follow-up of it. A little, oh, it's going already. A pinch of maggots there. You see, I think, I think they've, they're even stopping that, that shot there. I'm gonna hold the rod there. Ah, I bumped that one off. I've put the red maggots on. I think I'm getting small fish on the red maggots. You can see how far from the edge of the lilies I am. I just have that feeling. Now, how small was that? How small was that? That one has just hatched out. It's a little rud on the maggots. I'll try a piece of corn as well, see if that will. And this is what you should do is if you're getting too many <clears throat> very small fish, go to a slightly bigger bait and see if you can sort of get down through them. When that float was just there, as it was settling, it dragged to the left. So I know for a fact a fish has stopped that bait from going down and we're starting to pull it to the left and you can see look I'm catching fish in a three foot area and you've got the whole lake here and then there's three lakes so Lord and Lord knows what's in there another small one now just as a tip what I'm suggesting is that eating the small corn uh, the corn off and just leaving the maggots and that's why I get the small fish I'm probably going to have to go to a bigger hook and maybe double corn. Try and pick up a slightly, slightly bigger fish. I don't think I'm on the bottom. I think the fish are shaking that corn around up in the water, tearing the corn off and then taking the maggot. And there you go. He just bumped off. There's a piece of maggot skin there. Let's see if they take that, which I'm sure they will. With relish, I should think. And there you go, a piece of maggot skin. Can you, can you believe how many fish are in here? Been getting a steady stream of fish here, people. This one is a, it's not a roach actually, it's a nice rud, this one. Let's check this one out. Good mix of fish in. Now you can see, hopefully how much more vivid those colors are. If I hold up against the sky there for the rud. The, bottom jaw protrudes past the top jaw and those orange fins there look, you see them hopefully are much more orange so a good mix of fish that's a nice one Lees oh hang on a second Mackie's on people don't lose him Mackie hooks out with the disgorger back goes the fish let's go and check Mackie Mackie's got something up here It was an eel, was it, oh, mate? No, it was an eel. It was a silver eel. Oh, I see all the slime. You know, people can see the slime up the line here. <laughs> yep. That's about five species, anyway. Yeah. For me, it seems to be a single grain of sweet corn. Gets a slightly bigger. Well, it does get the bigger fish, I think. Here we go. If we get this one in, look at this. Nice size roach. And they're fat too. You can see that one there. A real chunk. 
and with it, if they do swallow it, just get a disgorger straight down, look, straight out. The hook is in there. So nice fishing. So all I'm doing, just like this. There we go, single grain of sweet corn like that. I'm trying to keep it as tight to those lilies as I can. If I, if I go out there, I get bigger fish. There seems to be one dragging to that way for some reason, yet the wind is blowing this way. So maybe it's circulating around here in some weird fashion. This wind has come right out. This is easterly, which is never a great wind to fish in. But of course, sun's out. It's just hazing over a bit. You see the clouds. If I look up there, I'm going to miss a bite. It's starting to race across a little bit there. The weather is going to be on the change. Maybe the bream or something will come back on if, it, uh, if we lose a bit of brightness with the sun. <laughs> Net, please, Mackie. <laughs> I think this is a net one. This is a bit. That'd be a roach of the day for me, I feel. Let me use as big as your ones, but no, it's a rud. Even better. That's a nice rud. Wow. That's a nice rud. Yeah, single piece of corn. Lovely looking fish, this one. So we've had some quality, quality roach and now real nice quality rud there. Well pleased with that one. Lilies in the background, float fishing, orange fins, filthy black, black chimney sweep hands with that black ground bait. But I tell you what, that black matchman's ground bait is definitely working. That's a beauty. Well pleased. Well pleased. I'm going to put him right back here. Look at that picture there. Beautiful rud and the float it was caught on. And I think I've just crushed a microphone. Sorry about that, Mike. Mike, Mike. Well, that rud was a nice fish. I am getting bites out on the uh, quiver tip out in the middle there. But, as you can see, that wind's coming right up. So, what I'm doing here, just so you know, it's got a regular sliding feeder there. Stop by the swivel, five pounds straight through because you never know what's in these lakes. Put a fresh piece of corn on. Now I find putting corn on first, like this. Hopefully you guys are seeing this. Like that, and then tipping it with just a couple of maggots. And if you don't have much space between the bend of the hook and here, don't put, let's say, the fat end of the maggot on. I just put, nick it through the thin end, which is, I believe, the head. And then, if you just nick it lightly, you see, that could be an attractant wiggling and moving there. Fill up with ground bait and heave it out there. As I say, it's a bit breezy now. We might have a move to one of the other lakes, give it a try. I've got a bit of ground bait left, so as you can see, it's filled up. Squeeze it a couple of times. Seems to be emptying. I'm going about... 30 yards, 35 yards out, I'm guessing. Boom. I think quite a bit of feed out there. Must have done 20, 25 casts out there. So I just bump it once. And then just rest it. That's a sort of bonus, because basically, look, going, I am just going down the inside here for roach with this black ground bait, bits of corn in it. I haven't put too many maggots in. If I put the maggots in, the little ones just go completely bonkers on it. I don't think they go down. I don't think they go down very far at all, to be honest, before they're nailed. I think you're just basically feeding the uh, feeding the stock there with the small fish. This time it looks a bit roachy. There we go. You see the roach is much more silver. Hook straight out, fish straight back. How fast was that? It's staying deep, isn't it, Matthew? I'm halfway through a sandwich, guys, excuse me. I've rudely interrupted my Matthew with a good fish. That's a tench. Well, that's swell. I'm putting money. 
Oh, that's a tench. I saw that swirl there, Mackie, and I only thought, oh, that's how I used to remember. There we go. It's been a while coming. Tench on what, LRF rods? Yeah, a drop shot rod. Drop shot rod? Yeah. Six pound fluorocarbon main line as well. Oh, look at that. And fake corn, was that, Mackie? The pellet. On oh, that pellet, yeah. Pellet with a bit of fake corn on the top. He's down here somewhere, guys. I can see there he is, there he is. Too late, he's in. There we go. Target species. Achieved. That's a light coloured one too, isn't that? I suppose it's the colour of the water they're in. Well done, Mackie. Yeah. I'm glad we got one. We're just thinking of moving. Just goes to show you. Absolutely gorgeous. And they go how big here? You say about oh, nine pounds. About nine pound in here. Wow. So there we go. Big old paddle on the back. <laughs> Happy. Chuffed to bits with this. Lovely job, Mackie. Well done. Well, with that, and the roach just shows you the quality of the fish in here. Shouldn't take long, gone. He's away. Well, we've started to get a few fish now. Um, had some really nice roach, um, a good mixed bag really, and I've had my first tench of the day. So, um, all in all, it's been a good little session. I'm just basically using a um, my drop shot rod that I use when I go sea fishing um, with a small feeder on. Um, with a little pellet and a little bit of corn on the top. What sort of reel, Mackie? Um, I'm just ba I'm using a Shimano Sienna. Um, it's a really nice little reel, not expensive. I think I paid twenty seven ninety nine for it, and it does all my sort of jobs. And in your other hand is <laughs> um, this is my whip. This is a little Fladden Diashi the whip they call it. Um, it's a really nice lightweight whip. Um, all I've got to attach to that is a midi sort of ready ready done pole pole float so you can buy um, those pole rigs already done yeah you can buy them already pre-tied winders they call them um, winders aren't they yeah and once they yeah you just tie it on the end of your whip and as you can probably see it's got a good bit of bend to it so that's a two-piece is that um it's telescopic oh it's telescopic really so it breaks down and you can catch all sorts on it guys i'm trying to get rigged up finally it's the old five minute warning We've come onto the other lake, pulled out one carp. No, I um, haven't got this one by a long way yet, but it's going for the rushes again. What I'm doing is something a bit bizarre, which is ledgering with a swim feeder and a match rod, because I couldn't be couldn't be bothered to uh, make the change. So we had such a short time. I'm not going to mess around. He says falling in the water, right in the weeds. Here we go. This uh, Probably a lost one, but I try and keep that. Might get him, might get lucky, might get lucky. Oh, no, don't do that. Come out of that weed, come out of the weed. Come out of the weed. It's oh. already going well. It's a common, I did see it's a common carp. Wow, is he going? I think they fight quite hard in because they're a strain of wild carp. Well, he seems like a wild carp. I just don't want to lose him with the weed. I don't want to break my rod either. He's got it. He's got me in. You monkey. Just have to slack off a second. He's buried. Oh no. You couldn't add him and eat it, could you? Have to slack him off. He's still on it.
Um, nowhere to go. Set the marginal weed so Oh! Chance! He's in! Hooray! And there you go folks. Maggie's come good with his promises of all these mixed species and is right. So there we go folks, a nice pretty little common there. It's nice in there last of that late afternoon sunshine. Well pleased with that. There's one place we're going now, up the pub for a beer. Let's get this guy back. Let's get him back. Gone. Yeah, have another throw if you want. Yes, just might as well, just in case something bizarre is happening. So this is the other carp lake, which apparently there's good, uh, good numbers of carp in. Now, what did I have on that? I think I put one grain of sweet corn on. I pulled it up over the eye of the hook, so I didn't want to mask the bend. I'm just going to put uh, half a dozen maggots on this size 10. It's a barbler, so the reason I put the sweet corn on is because sometimes you get the maggots wriggling off. So if they all wriggle off, this piece of sweet corn just lodges over the eye of the hook, so at least you've got some bait there. That's my theory, anyway. There we go. The last uh, fish I pulled out of was on the rushes. I always keep getting tangled. Come on, that's it. It's right tied to the rushes. This one was a little bit a little bit shorter there. Because I thought they might be lion bites. Well just Last knockings of last knockings of last knockings, people. And this one's gone down the other side. Oh, you're in, Matthew. I'll come the other side of it. He's taking me down past Mackey, this one. I don't know how big he is, but we'll take it. This one's on the on the uh, the quiver tip rod. I think I'm on about 14 hooks. I'm on quite a small hook here. And I'm at least I'm, I've got away from those rushes, so. Let's hope I can uh, get this one in to close out with. Yeah, Mackie and the owner were talking about a lot of the stock being wild in here apparently or coming from wild carp which traditionally fight really hard but don't grow that big and the wild carp are the ones that the monks used to eat. Obviously not carp fishermen but they used to keep the carp for eating. Oh, this one's going well. I'll tell you what, I wish this was one of those roach in that other lake. Digging and digging and digging. What is that? It's very black. It's very black fish, this one, Mackie. Yeah, they're often quite dark. It's only a small common, but... There he goes. Against the sunlight. Very, very dark little common, that one. But still. Been a great day's fishing. Hey, it's dark. Probably oh God, it's nearly black, that one. Run is always coming good right as we're due to pack up. We're gonna call it quits at five o'clock, it's six o'clock already. Only a small carp, but very, very dark, very chunky. Unbelievable scrapper. Get this one back. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Thanks to Mackie for giving me some great fishing, mixed fishing here. Down in deepest, darkest Dorset. Well, it's sunny today, actually. It's a really good mixed fishing, I've enjoyed it. Float, ledger. Everything, it's been taking everything and good weather as well. Hit the subscribe button, hit Mike on, on his uh, TA Outdoors, which is going crazy, and we'll see you in the next episode.
Yeah.